All right, so now I'm going to quickly, because I'm eating up my time here, talk about what we're doing at Pax River, and if you have questions, we'll address those. But what's cool about Pax River, and in the background there, is the base, a prime piece of real estate in southern Maryland, about an hour and a half south of D.C., small airspace to fly in, but still, nonetheless, a great place to, uh, to operate and test. We're part of the Naval Air Systems Command, and you can see there's all our sites there, really broken into the east and the west coast. you got the Aircraft Division out at Pax River, and you got the Weapons Division at China Lake and Point Magoo out here on the west coast. We also have major sites at, at Lakers, New Jersey, and our major depots at Cherry Point, Jacksonville, uh, and out at North Island in San Diego. Got a lot of airplanes, 53 different type model series, got about 130 airplanes total at Pax River alone, and I'm not even including the unmanned systems that we have. So we've got some cool stuff that we're operating there at, at, the, uh, at the base. Under me, I have three squadrons, a rotary wing squadron, maritime squadron, and a stri uh, strike squadron. And there are some of the representative airplanes in each. As well, we have the Naval Test Pilot School there. It's also the Army's Test Pilot School, where they're sole source of production for their Army test pilots. I'm just gonna, these, some of these pictures were just pleasing to the eye, so I'm just going to scroll through them and let, let you enjoy them. We have all flavors of F-18 there. We've recently gotten our second E-2D Hawkeye. Uh, with the new radar, which is really what this airplane is all about. It will be game-changing for the carrier battle groups. A couple of shots of the very first arrested landings on the George Herbert Walker Bush CVN-77 aircraft carrier. We certify every aircraft carrier. So we go out and ring out all the arresting gear and catapult systems as well as test all the precision approach landing systems on the carriers. I thought this was a pretty cool shot of the V-22 uh, with showing some of the vapes coming off the rotor props. And you can see, maybe in the picture there, you can see it's, it's actually got a tethered wire on it. And we were doing our high, hot, heavy testing with it. We don't load the airplane up with all the weight to test for those conditions. We just tether it to the ground with a sensor. And if we have a problem, we can just jettison the wire. Uh, and so that was the testing they were doing out in Gunnison, Colorado. You can see that same wire. We're doing that same testing with the CH-53 there at Pax River. Um, as well as some of the dispenser testing in the uh, 46 and the rocket firing and the uh, upgrades to the uh, H-1 program. To test pilot school, this is near and dear to my heart because I used to be the commanding officer of the school. Uh, 13 different types of airplanes that we fly there. We have fixed wing, rotary wing curriculums as well as a systems curriculum. For the fixed wing guys, they're flying the airplanes that you see here, the T-38, which arguably is the sexiest airplane on the planet. Uh, 1960s vintage airplane designed by engineers with slide rolls. And uh, what, a, what a masterful airplane, still fantastic lines. T-6 Texan, which is going to be the mainstay of naval aviation training here in the very near future. And then this was a picture of one of our older F-18Bs, which now have been replaced with the F-18F, Super Hornet. Uh, test pilot school wouldn't be test pilot school without a radial engine airplane. We've got the oldest active Navy bureau number in our NU-1B Otter a neat airplane, and then we use the uh, U-6 Beavers to actually tow our glider. And I used to brag that I was the only guy around with it that had X-planes because the designation on the gliders are still X-26. And interestingly, these airplanes used to actually be um, motorized gliders, and we took the engines off of them, and they're now they're just uh, straight sailplanes. We're taking deliveries of UH-72s that you see in the uh, top right there, beautiful aircraft. The Army provides us uh, H-58s and Blackhawks. Additionally, we have some Seahawks. One's a variable stability airplane, the other's a sensor platform. Students uh, that come through will generally get about 25 different airplanes in their logbook during the course of the one-year instruction that they get. And at the end, they do a graduation exercise on an airplane they've never touched before. Some of those airplanes you see here, um, to include MiG-15, B-25, they get one hour flying time and about four different airplanes over the course of the year in what we call our qualitative evaluation program, which is really to test their adaptability to jump in an airplane for the very first time and be able to go out and do some test techniques in it. And then uh, if you want to get your hands on a space shuttle like, like Hook Ibsen, you really got to be a graduate of, of a test pilot school, not just Navy. We have an Air Force as well uh, and some of the European schools. Um, otherwise, you got to have several PhDs, I think, in order to get your foot in the door there. But Timing is everything for guys that are graduating from test pilot school. Just a couple of weeks ago, we took delivery of our first JSF, or F-35 aircraft. The picture you see here with the doors open are the B model. Now, this is going to be the Marine Corps uh, short takeoff, vertical takeoff landing aircraft. Uh, a lot of moving parts in this machine. 
But this will be a fifth generation fighter for Navy and Marine Corps, as well as a lot of international customers in the Air Force. Uh, an enormous program. This picture is probably not but a week and a half old. This was uh, the arrival of BF-2, the second of those airplanes at Pax River. And that picture is, is startling. It almost looks like a painting, the, the way the, uh, the skin of that airplane looks. Again, just some more pictures of the transit from uh, Fort Worth, Texas to Pax River. They did this particular airplane nonstop with in-flight refueling. And that's one of our uh, VX-20 C-130s passing the gas. This is the uh, P-8A Poseidon. This is going to be our P-3 Orion replacement airplane. Um, I decided to throw the picture in in the bones just to show you that uh, it's a 737-based aircraft and desperately needed in, in the fleet. Now, for manned aviation, you know, this is not something that fighter pilots would normally want to talk about, but it is, it is pretty neat stuff. This is the X-47. We're getting ready to take this to the ship here in another year and a half. Uh, and this is what it looks like at uh, the facility in Palmdale, and then there's the artist conception of it coming off the ship. So we're just now getting into our taxi test with this airplane uh, out at Palmdale. We have the Navy owns two of the uh, Global Hawk aircraft. We've been flying those at Pax River. They've been doing not only uh, missions over in theater, uh, but also they were doing some of the fire uh, surveying here when we had the uh, wildfires here on the West Coast. And then there's some pictures of the MQ-8 Fire Scout doing some ship trials as well. And then there's some smaller UAVs that we're involved with. I, I just pirated these charts out of a different brief, but the Scan Eagle is a high demand item for our, our warfighters overseas. And I wanted to show this picture on the left because this is the recovery system for those that are not familiar. It's Boeing proprietary, but it's actually a hook and there's a wire. And they fly this airplane in and it snags the wire. The centrifugal force throws the kill signal to the engine and then it just spirals down and they pick it up. Uh, what's amazing though is that this thing is so precise and coming in and hitting that wire that it was hitting the same point so much that it was chewing up the leading edge of the wing. So they actually had to put a bias in the software when it came in so it would continue to hit it at different points so it wouldn't chew up the leading edge. Pretty interesting. Now had I known that we were gonna be doing this, this much work in, in government with model airplanes, I would have stuck to model airplanes rather than full size, because I tell you, it is a bonanza out there in terms of what's going on with unmanned systems now. And again, the Shadow, just a, another example of a little bit heavier class uh, aircraft that we're doing in, in UAVs. Now, quickly, um, at Webster Field, which is our outlying field at Pax River, we're heavily involved in doing the annual student unmanned system competition as part of the AUVSI. Um, I tell you, these kids, it used to be collegiate, and, and our local high school actually had a uh, an entry this last time and actually did quite well. They have to brief their engineering proposal to a board as well as do the flight uh, exercise. And so they did, it, did a really nice job. But there's some really interesting uh, approaches to doing the challenges out there on the flying site. Uh, and then most recently we, we started doing an aerospace club teaching uh, exercise with the local middle school and here's just some pictures from last week we started doing our delta dart projects and we're flying the blade helicopters in the in the cafeteria and i put the picture on the top right because my partner in crime who's my chief of staff is uh, klaus Ullman, and he was one of the the pilots that was uh, on one of the teams that was doing the, the wright brothers commemorative flying and so he actually flew uh, the uh, the glider as well as the um, the wright flyer replicas some pretty interesting stuff and really neat and maybe uh, AMA will consider bringing him out in, in a future uh, expo and he can brief you on, on his activities there. So in, in closing, and I know I went a little bit long here, but I wanted to put a plug in for AMA. It's, it's a wonderful organization. Uh, you need that advocacy for our, our hobby. Um, it, it makes a difference. And, and their little bumper sticker, bringing modelers together is really true. And you never know that the small world connections that actually do occur um, and so if I can leave you with some thoughts about just reflecting on, on who you've come across in model aviation and the things that model aviation has given to you all, I, I guess I ask um, politely, think of ways that you might be giving, uh, are able to give back something to model aviation. Uh, it is important, and uh, my bumper sticker at the end there is catch the bug and try to make it contagious. So with that, I think I've got a couple of minutes for questions.